Hey there. First of all, thank you for buying this tutorial. This is actually going to be the first of several paid tutorials I'll make for the coronavirus season. Although, rest assured, I'll try and give the people who bought this one a discount on the future ones. I'm not sure exactly how I'll do it. I think Gumroad gives me the email addresses. So if you bought this tutorial uh, and didn't just get it from someone else, you should receive an email from me with a discount code or whatever I do to get that to work. So anyways, Firebolt, I'm going to explain to you some of the history about the move. And that's because I find it sad that most tutorials don't give you some insight into how the move was created. Now, as a creator, I love to hear about this kind of thing. I love to know why the move was created, sometimes even why it was named. I like to learn how it came about. I like to get inside the creator's head, and that's because um, in order to take inspiration from someone, I don't learn their moves. I learn how their moves kind of fit into their uh, ethos for creating. Um, how they think about moves themselves. And so I'll try to provide you some insight into that by talking about the history of Firebolt. And uh, you can skip through this if you want, but I think it's pretty valuable. Anyway, so Firebolt was created to be an interlocking Nimbus. If you don't know what Nimbus is, you probably should not be watching this tutorial. It's probably too advanced. So I'm sorry about that. Email me uh, through Instagram, my um, email in my bio, and I'll try to refund you. Um, actually, no. People might scam me, so never mind. Just learn Nimbus, come back here, and uh, I'll still be here teaching it to you. Firebolt, that is. But Firebolt was made to be an interlocking Nimbus. Nimbus was this cut right here. There's already some passing resemblance you might see. The wee pack is moving around each other, and it's also repeating. But, as you can probably already tell, it's also nothing like Nimbus. And that's because Firebolt started out as an interlocking Nimbus idea. At least I had that idea in my head. But as with most creations, it just did not play out that way. And I think that's for the best. There's a guy named Billy Markovsky who created an interlocking Nimbus. It's a much better interlocking Nimbus. Much better at being an interlocking Nimbus than Firebolt is. But, you know, I still prefer Firebolt because it's kind of my own thing. And when I had the idea for this interlocking Nimbus, I asked myself, how can I get this to work? I played around with this grip right here, which I believe Billy also uses, and I just found it too restricting. I like to have some flow, I love to have some momentum to my cuts. And so I decided to try and make firebolts with some, starting from some other thing, just have it tangentially inspired from Nimbus. And then I remembered one of my older ideas, called Clippy. It's just this little thing I came up with squids. And it looks like this. And that was it. You see there's a clipped packet, that's why I called it Clippy. But I had that idea. And so I was messing around with this. With um, this little move right here. And I realized that at the beginning of the move, I grab a packet on the corners, and I split it. And so what if I just grab this packet right here? Well, I can grab that and I can spin two packets at once. And I love things like that where packets are moved by other packets. It saves a lot of work. And I thought to myself, I need some motion here. I don't want to have just that packet moving. It has to be symmetrical in some sense. So I decided to have this packet roll over the thumb. And I notice that it kind of automatically drops into there. And so you can bring this packet back and just do that. So this was the original version of Firebolt. It just looked like that. And now it wasn't repeating. It also was only doable with squids at the time. Because I just wasn't good enough yet. But still, it was Firebolt. Now, it wasn't actually named Firebolt yet. It was just interlocking Nimbus idea based on Clippy. And so I decided to try and create an inter... I don't know, repeating version. 
If I said interlocking in the past few sentences, I meant repeating. But um, I messed around with this idea. And then I found out that when I get here, I'm basically at the beginning of the move. Because if you saw the beginning of the move, I have a corner packet, I have a packet here, and I have a packet here. At the end of the move, I have a corner packet, I have two packets. All I need to do is pass one of the packets over into my right hand, and I'm at the beginning of the move. But how do I make that happen smoothly? Well, when you have anything like this where a packet's going down and then closing, it doesn't it make sense to continue that motion? So I decided I'm going to have this packet roll over here so that I'm exactly in the same position as when I start. So I can just continue the move like that. It does create a bit of a stutter sometimes though because you have to spin this packet and spin it again. But I think you can make up for it with enough practice and flow. And uh, so I messed around with that and I ended up doing a firebolt and one of the my followers came up to me and he said, Hey, I like Firebolt, but I don't think the closer works. And that kind of mystified me a little bit because it seems to be fine to me, the whole closer where you bring it up like that. But then uh, he showed me another idea where you go like this. And that was just so much better. I think I think it was Akfol, A-K-F-O-L. I forget your name. Sorry about that. His name is AKFOL on Instagram. I believe he's the person who um, showed me this closer. And so I created that closer and surprisingly enough, it got on Best Card is Alive. Now, it was with squids. It wasn't with cards yet, but that's a big achievement. And so I practiced it for a while. I got good at it with uh, cards. And the name Firebolt just came out. And it came out because I was looking at Nimbus, and I thought to myself, because I was very proud of Firebolt, how can I kind of cheekily uh, make fun of Nimbus? How can I say I'm better? Um, in a fun way, of course. And I asked myself, how did Chase Duncan create the name Nimbus? How did he come up with it? And you know, in hindsight, he probably, he honestly probably didn't have any real reason for the name, considering Bobo 3. But uh, I looked at Nimbus, and I thought, hmm, what can I associate that with? Nimbus, Nimbus, that reminds me of Harry Potter. Nimbus 2000, Harry Potter, what was better than the Nimbus 2000? Well, Nimbus 2001, but 2001, Nimbus 2001, that's a boring name. Uh, let's see, oh wait, no, it was outclassed by the Firebolt in, uh, what, Prisoner of Azkaban? Let's see, Nimbus 2000, Nimbus 2001. Firebolt. That's what I'm going to name my move. Firebolt. Kind of an interlocking Nimbus, but not really. Throwing shade at Chase Duncan, saying I'm better than him, faster than him. Which I'm not, but it's a joke. So Firebolt became the name for this move. And so a few years later, I think one year later actually, I had to create some moves for a Best Cardist Alive video. I believe it's still on the channel. It's called Neverland. Um, it didn't really fit the um, what I artistically had in mind for it. The music wasn't quite right. Well, you know, it was a good first attempt at a long video. I have an older version on my channel, by the way, called Fly Me to the Moon, which I like a lot more. I recommend you watch that too. So I had to come up with some moves for that video. One of the things I thought to myself was, if I really want to make this a better move than Chase Duncan's move, I have to make it four packets. Because as Patrick Varnavas always says, Varnavas, Varnavas, as he, as that guy always says, you should always uh, add a packet when you want to create a variation. And so, if you want to create, make a move better. Whoopsie, kick to the table. If you want to make a move better, you just add a packet. And I thought to myself, how do I do that with Firebolt? Well, let's see. So when you do Firebolt. You start with this position, and you pass this packet through, and you grab it on the other side. But with many cuts, you're holding a packet in there when you have this kind of grip. So, starting at the beginning, what if 
I did a earlier and passed the top packet through. You know, that took a bit of readjustment to get used to that, but then I got to this point. And I asked myself, okay, what do I do here? Now, remember how I said earlier that this packet can spin two packets at once? So when I go back here, I thought to myself, I can use that thing right there for leverage. I can spin four packets, I'm oh, sorry, three packets at once. You see this move right here? It's just a very basic move. And I combine that, and you get this right here. The packet goes there, and I love this next part. Goes here. Uh, and thank you so much, Akfal, for giving me the idea for this closure, because everything just goes easily like that. Now, it was really difficult to figure out how to make that repeat. Uh, I'm not too concerned about making a true repeating cut where all packets interchange with all positions within the cut, so that wasn't the issue. The issue was figuring out how to get all of this to repeat, but I, I got that to work, um, which I'm pretty proud of. And I asked myself, what should I name this cut? Let's see, Firebolt. Was there something better than the Firebolt? Let me check on Pottermore, um, which a very dorky thing to say, but anyway. So I checked on Pottermore, and apparently there was something called the Firebolt Supreme that came out in the Harry Potter world. And while I don't put much stock into what J.K. Rowling says about her universe, out of universe, I decided Firebolt Supreme sounds pretty good, and, uh, you know, some people might think it has something to do with the Supreme brand. And while that is a mis um, mistaken connection, it's a cool connection nonetheless. And so I decided the three-packet version will be Firebolt, the four-packet version will be Firebolt Supreme. So there you have it, that's the history of Firebolt, um, and its move, and its mechanics itself. So, hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial, it's been 12 minutes according to the camera, and uh, hopefully you gain some insight from that. Alright, first of all, I highly recommend you actually learn this with the trainers. That's because if you learn it with cards, you'll notice that many of the packets actually have fingers sliding along their surfaces. Even nowadays, years later, I still slide some cards. So I highly recommend you actually learn this cut with trainers. I don't care what you think about trainers. I don't care if you think that it's not real cardistry. Get over it. Learn it with trainers or rubber band some cards. Then you can learn it with cards. Now let's start off by grabbing most of the deck between the thumb and little finger. Let this packet revolve around the middle finger. Oh yeah, this is going to be the offhand, this is going to be the deckhand. Anyways, you grab these packets, this packet, and you let it revolve around the middle finger. And naturally, a large packet is going to kind of fall off. It may not be completely on the fingers, may not be completely in the palm, but you want it to be placed in such a way that when this packet is turned over like so, you have enough space to push the packet up like so. You do not need to have it clipped under the thumb, that's not going to be what's happening. You just need to have enough space to pull it up like so. If it's too close to the fingers, you won't have enough space. If it's too close to the thumb, you won't have enough space. So just find that sweet spot for your hands. If you can't do it, maybe just try some stretching exercises for your hands. Um, and if that still doesn't work, maybe you should wait for them to grow, or maybe it's not the move for you. So you're going to do that. And now this hand is going to curl in with the little finger and ring finger. As it does that, you turn the hand over and you spin this packet. Now you're going to push this through and grab with the thumb and index. And at the same time, you're going to be pushing up with this packet, or you're gonna start pushing up. And then as you push up and as you move, start moving this packet through, you're going to be turning your hands over. You're not actually gonna take this out from between here. That just makes it easier to show. The packets or the hands are turning over. If you complete or if you push this packet up as you do that, you'll notice it naturally forces this packet out from between them. This packet, if you keep the index finger extended, 
automatically goes into a pincho grip. And this packet, you can honestly just drop it down like so. If you notice, it's perpendicular to this packet, and the little finger is on this edge. You don't need to worry about the exact positioning, since it's only here for an instant. So again, you pull this through as you turn your hands, the palms, you make them switch places in orientation, and you complete the charlier, keep your index finger of the off hand extended, so that you can do this pincho grip. You drop this packet down, and then you complete this most of the way. You don't connect with your thumb, you just kind of have it here. And honestly, at this point, I let this packet move down a little bit. Then you grab this packet between the thumb and little finger of the off hand. This is the tricky part. You're going to do two things at once. In the right hand, sorry, the off hand, you're going to use the fourth finger to spin this packet, and this packet is going to move like so. It's hard to do on its own, but with the assistance of this packet, it's easier to show. It's an awkward movement because you're using these two fingers right here to curl in and pull the packet around. Then you're extending them again to pull it into the palm. But with the, ex uh, but with the assistance of this corner packet, it makes it a little easier. So if you watch very carefully, I use the fourth finger to twist this packet. This packet, the corner revolves between the fourth finger and little finger. The middle finger is doing the grunt work here. Middle finger helps move that packet around. This pops out, this corner pops out from here. And then the other fingers can just gather it into the palm like so. So if you see that movement, practice that movement on its own. Uh, you can take this packet out as you do it. Make sure you do not use these fingers to assist. That would ruin the purpose of this little exercise. Now, this packet up here, you're going to bring your thumb to this edge. Curl in with the middle and index fingers. Now again, this is one of those sections where the grips are not really well defined. So you're going to have to kind of find the positioning that works for your hands and copy what I'm doing to the best of your ability. So you curl all these fingers and you're kind of letting it go like so. It's easier to actually show in action, so I'll start from the beginning. You go here. Thumb mainly is doing the work here, but these fingers are still curling into help. This index finger is going to push the packet against the thumb, the off hand thumb, while the deck hand thumb is still holding onto it a little bit. And then, naturally, your hands are going to turn like so. This short edge should go into the perlicue of this hand, like so. And then the packet goes down. Now at the same time, you also have to do that tricky motion I mentioned earlier with the fourth finger over here. So if you practice, the timing looks like so. When you roll with the fourth finger, when you start rolling, this packet starts moving. They're moving at roughly the same speed. So this packet is face up when this packet is face up, and this packet is face down. Now you're pinching this against the thumb. You're not really pinching it. You're just holding it gently against that thumb, the off hand thumb. At the same time that you're beginning to grab this bottom packet with the other fingers and pull it into the palm. Now your hands, the palms, move like so. And you bring the packet in. Make sure this packet remains face up. This next part is relatively simple. Curl in with these fingers, raise with the thumb by le leveraging against this corner of the packet as you move this hand forward and close. Now in order to repeat this, it's actually rather simple. Relatively speaking, of course. I went too far right there. 
but you want to do this move all the way until you get to this point. Now instead of bringing the right hand down here, you want to bring the right hand out here. Notice this packet is face up, you just bring it out here. That's going to use the fourth finger here to kind of help move that packet around. So it is twisting, but the palm makes it seem like it's still in the same orientation. Now, notice that this packet, you can kind of see how, naturally speaking, this packet would want to roll out of the hand as this packet goes down. You're going to take advantage of that. After you roll this packet with the fourth finger, notice it's between these two packets. These fingers contact this packet on this side. You roll, actually, you pull the thumb back like so. This makes it easier to trap this corner with this packet. Now be very careful because this corner has to be kind of far on the fingers for this to work. It has to be far enough on the fingers for this to trap this corner and start turning it. And if it's too close, you'll just get stuck. So make sure you're out here enough for this to begin turning that middle packet. Now you're at the beginning. I'll walk through this again. You're going to curl in with these fingers, pass this packet through, thumb and little finger. Keep these fingers extended to make it a little easier. Curl in with the middle and fourth finger, doing the charlier. Keep the index finger extended as you turn the hands over. Let go of that large packet. You can let it fall perpendicular. I like to let it fall here, but it's possible to still do it perpendicular. Let it fall down. Complete this pincho movement. Keep it held very loosely here. Thumb and little finger grab this corner. Thumb contacts this corner, this edge. Spin with the fourth finger as you curl in with these fingers and the thumb. Continue the movement of that bottom packet. This movement where you're curling in with the middle finger to bring it parallel to your fingers. Continue that motion as this packet starts turning around. Pinch lightly between the thumb and index finger. Thumb contacts here. And then you just close. So that's Firebolt. You can practice this uh, with trainers. You can practice it with cards. But again, I highly recommend you do it with trainers. Now, let's talk about some um, stuff about flow. This cut, when you practice it, you'll notice there are points where packets kind of fall into place in the sense that the flow speeds up momentarily at some points. Like you'll see some packets, let me show you, some packets kind of pop into place at points, especially right here. This packet kind of flops over at a different speed than the rest of the cut was going at. Don't worry about maintaining a constant speed with all the components of the cut. All you want to do to keep a good flow is to keep all the movements smooth. You want to make sure everything's deliberate. Momentum and gravity play a great role in this cut, but in order to make the cut look good, you want to have a very comfortable feeling. You want to feel like you're almost just passing a ball from hand to hand. That's what this cut should feel like at full speed. So now, I recommend you learn this move for at least a month before you attempt Firebolt Supreme. Some people may have find issue with that, but honestly speaking, I've never seen someone do this move for less than a month and be able to do Firebolt Supreme decently at all. So I highly recommend learn this move, get used to the motions, use trainers if possible, and then you can tackle Firebolt Supreme in the next section. Okay, so most likely you've just jumped into this next section, which is fine. You can at least learn what Firebolt Supreme is kind of constructed, how it works and all that stuff, but still, practice the other one. So let's start with Firebolt Supreme. Now in the last one you grabbed most of the deck and you left enough to roll it easily between the thumb and little finger. 
Now we want to have twice as much in the left hand. For me that varies. It used to be around this much, and now I can easily get away with this much, but just find something comfortable for you. Do the same splits as normal, but this time, as you turn the left hand over, notice that you split a charlier at the same time here. So you split this charlier, and you push with the thumb here, and let this packet, make sure the little finger and fourth finger are kind of holding onto it lightly. Lightly, you're not actually pinching it, you're just guiding the packet. Lightly guide the packet through. At this point, it's a bit tricky, because you're actually just pushing the packet with the little finger right here. What I like to do when I get to this point, what you cannot do with the original because of the construction of this, is actually use these fingers to help. When I get to a certain point, I like to curl in with those, which pushes the packet out further. And that's just because with this packet in here, it makes it harder to push it through all the way. So use these fingers to help you, or not if your hands are large enough. Grab the packet here, and then when you do the turnover motion, you want to make sure this packet is underneath the other one. So do the turnover, drop this packet on top of this packet, and make sure this time, instead of having it on the little finger, you want it completely perpendicular with the other packet. Now you have it here, and you're going to grab this packet here, and you're going to do the same thing as before, where you kind of curl in here and do that motion, but you won't have the thumb to assist. It's a bit tricky on its own, but again, the fourth finger in this packet kind of helps. So do this motion here, practice it a few times. And notice that it's kind of hard to explain this motion because the way this packet moves down here is not it's not exactly flipping over, it's not exactly revolving. It's doing both at the exact same time. I would say it's kind of pivoting a little bit on this corner if you look very carefully. So make sure you keep that in mind. As you do that, this thumb goes here. You do the same motions as you normally would do. Make sure you have enough space for the thumb to clear this packet. You don't want to be pulling it up like so. And you do the same thing as before. Make sure you don't do what I just did right now, where you kind of pop this packet over here. That makes the overall flow look a bit janky. Now this part I really love. I'm kind of proud of this moment. Thanks again to Akfo. If you watched the intro, you know what I meant. And now you do this right here same as before, but then you grab this packet with the thumb. All the movements in this cut are light, by the way, just like with the three packet version. Do you notice how nicely everything just closes together? Now, if you want to do the repeating version of this cut, it's a little tricky. Let me try and show you. So once you get to this point over here, you're going to use the ring finger to help move this packet over like so and you're going to spin both these packets. Now in the original one, you kind of had to have this packet far on the fingers and then flip it over, and that was a bit tricky to balance. But luckily, let's get to that point again. Luckily with this version, since you have the extra packet, you can actually have it, a, you can start out from further away. This packet from further away, I mean. This kind of lines up with the second knuckle right here for me, and that just feels a lot easier. Notice I let the oops. Notice that I let this packet slide down the new packet, like so. And then it just falls like so. And again, you don't have to push with this finger. Now that it's automatically here, you can just curl in with these fingers, like so. And curl in like that. Curl in, keep the index finger extended, pull this packet out, do this motion. You'll have to be a bit wider than the three packet version in terms of hand space, how far they are apart, to be able to do this motion at the same time. 
And notice, by the way, that you're never really grabbing the thumb and the index on the packet at the same time because that wastes, or that makes it harder to hold this. Instead, the thumb kind of lets go of the instant the index finger grabs it. So turn that over, flip the packet, and now, very carefully, spin these packets. Remember, all these packets are being held with momentum and gravity. Now, you get here, you just nicely close. So that's Firebolt Supreme. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I really hope that uh, this was worthwhile for you, because I hope to do the same formats for paid tutorials in the future. Thank you very much. Have a good day.